My mind is placid. The ruminations of my day rose and fell on my breath as I stared blankly down the hallway. Traffic of a thousand shuffling bodies run adjacent to me. Cotton and polyester collide as I duck through the oncoming traffic and into the men's bathroom. I pull up my phone as I begin to use the urinal. A faint analogy of what a screen could be tells me, If you don't hurry up, I'm leaving without you. It's just another day. Another boy roughhousing with another stifles my attempts to reach the sink. The heavy door out into the high school's hallways cracks open by my hand, and then, fully exposed. It's become pure silence, like every atom has gone into the deepest sleep. I turn to question the silence. The bathroom is still and lifeless now. In the hall, lockers stretch and end where they should. Light bends through the panes. The light is sharper. The light is now blood red. I step out. Stale air. No panic. Just acceptance. I must go meet my sister. I'm already late. She'll leave without me. I cross the hallway and press through a window door as the old oak tree overlooks me. It's frozen in place. It's trapped in a plot between snaking red metal fences. Not just her, but everyone is gone. No cars remain in the parking lot. Everything is red. No sun coats the sky or blinds me. No shadows are born in this place. Just a stale, dull, blank red. An ocean sprawls out before me. A pillar of light splits it. A sun should be there, but it just isn't. Those red metal fences are my guide towards the asphalt. Where the symmetrical lot mirrors itself, a small plot of grass rests. The sound of crackling, like the pop of burning cedar, quietly splits the silence. An oil barrel, with its contents burning. Beside it, with arms stretched wide, black hair long past its shoulders, I see it. It stares. It stares blankly towards the sea away from me. It wears white cloth draped over everything but its head. The linens lick the stale air while wind lightly caresses orange flames. The wind touches nothing else. Not even me. I need to get home, I say to myself. The fences only guide me closer to it, and I need to pass by. I try the door, but it's locked now. I follow the fence towards the thing, my fingertips caressing the bare metal gently. My eyes train on it, never leaving the flowing black strands. I slowly shuffle closer to open air. First, the head moves, slow, calculated, but only the head. It has no face. A deep, featureless blackness stares at me with a piercing gaze that no eyes could. Then. The body. It's floating over the grass. As if all at once, it moves towards me. Its torso and outstretched arms reorient themselves with its head. Its head starts shaking violently. Rapidly. I pick up pace as all the fear of what is happening collapses in on me in a moment. My only choice is running towards it. The sound of a low, seemingly endless exhale erupts from its mouth effortlessly encroaching upon my one and only escape. Each nerve in my body overstimulated as its presence slips past my neck, and I explode into the parking lot. Cornering where the school meets the main road, I sprint up the hill, and then, breathless, I stand almost triumphantly, bearing down upon the new view. The sea is blood red. The light is unmoving. The world is still faint and silent. I blink. There, upon the grassy hill below, it stands, arms stretched wide, staring blankly off at the sea, its hair lapping at the atmosphere. Its barrel crackles, still burns brightly. It floats. It observes. It begins. It flails its neck up, its exhales louder. Its intention clear, advancing, floating, uncanny, towards me. 
My body moves before I think. I run to the main doors of my school. I pull out my phone and I try so desperately to text my sister. My fingers sink through it. I can't find the messaging app. I try to close everything and start again. The screen is blank. I'm staring at the old mall. I'm in a field in the middle of it all. All the businesses are decrepit. Things and businesses aren't where they should be. Why am I in town? I'm still shaken up. I pull out my phone again. What are you doing? It says. The message is from my sister. Why are you there? She asks. I manage to get a text through. Where are you? How can you see me? The coffee shop. Can you see me? I look up. Red light coats this world. It's stale. I look towards where she said she was. The one coffee shop in this small town is barely standing. The sign isn't even the same business. There's nobody. She's not even here. I try to text back, but my fingers slip through the screen. I'm panicking. I can't figure it out. I turn around. It stares. Not at the sea. Not anywhere else. It stares at me, violently shaking. A barrel erupts with flames beside it. The crackling floods my ears. I can't move. I can't breathe. It begins ever so slowly floating. I can't move my body or close my eyes. My mind erupts with panic. I am paralyzed. A deep exhale assaults my ears. It drowns out the crackling. It stares face to face, and then nothing. Lots of people say dreams have meaning. Even more say that they're meaningless defragmentations of the mind. Some people don't even dream at all. When I was born and made my character sheet, I must have min-maxed my dream attributes because almost every night I met with some of the most fantastical and outright gorgeous dreamscapes imaginable. I don't keep a dream journal on a regular basis because it feels literally impossible to document the feelings and situations I'm thrust into. As you might have guessed, that was a nightmare I once had. That nightmare messed with me more than any dream I've ever had in my entire life. I remember showing up to school, being driven by my sister, and stepping out into the patch of grass in the parking lot. Apparently, I went white as a ghost. I'd woken up from it in a cold sweat and a panic, crying, after all. Ever since, I've kind of always prodded the idea. Not the meaning of the dreams, but the purpose of them. What was I dealing with that led to this horrifying depiction of reality? How was my mind able to fully reconstruct a place that I knew so well? If I fully believe I'm real here, but I fully believe I'm real there then, meaningfully, what's the difference? When somebody says, Oh yeah, I never dream. I always feel a little bit perplexed. I feel like a great deal of time, and I'm sure many can relate, I am dreaming, even through the day. Colloquially, me and my friends call that dream the T-Pose Man. Because I guess at the time that was kind of the thing, but... It doesn't really do it justice. I mean, that dream actually changed my life. I'd never had nightmares like that before. And I still kind of don't, you know? I don't really deal with night terrors. But I do have a fear that one day that's going to happen again. The stuff I've been dreaming about lately has been beautiful. And kind of sad, too. But... Like meeting somebody that was created in your mind. That you'll probably never meet because they don't exist. Like is the world inside your head, is it realer than out here? But yeah, tell me what you think about that dream. Tell me if you've had any nightmares that have absolutely shaken you to your core. I haven't had one like that since. And I really hope... I don't. Not again. Never again. 
Maybe I'll talk about dreams more in the future. So I have a hell of a lot of them. But yeah. Thank you for watching.